Chapter 6, Multivariable Calculus. In this chapter, we learn subjects in multivariable calculus, such as the gradient vector, a method of Lagrange multipliers for constrained optimization problems, and the gradient descent method. Section 6.1 multivariable functions and their partial derivatives. Earlier, you learn the function of one variable and x is independent variable and y is dependent variable. Then we can write here y call f of x. Right? You learned this one from uh, high school. Now we define a function of two variables, f, is a rule, uh, that means it's a function that assigns each ordered pair of real numbers x, y, a unique real number uh, denoted by f of x, y. The d is called the domain of the function f, and its range is the set of uh, the all values of f. Uh, if f is a function of two variables, and if we write down in this way, then x, y uh, are called independent variables, and z is the dependent variable. So rather than one independent variable, the function is defined uh, with two independent variables. Once you try to make a, a graph for this uh, simple function, then this is x-axis and uh, there is y-axis and it will be a curve. But uh, for functions of two variables, uh, it will be a surface. Okay, that is now and this x direction, y direction, and z direction. For example, uh, we have a domain here, d, uh, rectangular domain, like a d, on x, y plane. Then a function, the graph of a function can be uh, like that here, now a surface. So that is now um, for uh, the graph for this function and each point over there will be now that is x and y and is z okay z is the same as f of x y right okay so it is expansion of this uh, uh, functions of one variable See this example. f of x, y is defined in this way. Evaluate f32 and give its domain. Okay, that means that x3, y is 2. So here, from definition, the top will be x3, 3 plus y is 2 plus 1. And then bottom is x3. 3 minus 1. So we can get uh, top is square root of 6, bottom is 2. That's the answer for this portion. Now, how about the domain? For domain, now we may consider the natural domain. Uh, that means the uh, collection of points uh, where the function is well defined. Uh, first of all, the inside radical must be non-negative, so that x plus y plus 1 must be non-negative, and the denominator must not be 0. So x minus 1 is not 0. So every point satisfying these two conditions will be a point in the domain. Okay, from here, uh, we can rewrite to uh, draw uh, the domain. Okay, 
and y is larger than or equal to minus x minus 1. Now x is not 1. Okay, let's uh, try to visualize the domain. That is now x direction, that is y direction. Okay, then okay, that's y and that's x. And minus x minus 1 may be given in this way. And y is larger than or equal to uh, this line, so that is upper portion. And this one is saying that x should not be 1. That means at 1, we are making vertical line, and this line must be excluded. So this is the domain in picture. Okay. Find the domain and range of function f of x, y is the square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, again, for this function inside the radical, the uh, value must be non-negative. 9 minus x squared minus y squared must be non-negative. That is same as x squared plus y squared is bound by 9. Okay, that is um, a disk of radius 3, x coordinate in y direction, and this is 3. Inside this disk, that's the domain. Okay, now what is the range? A red color is always non negative. Now, Inside the radical, the value is decreasing. Once x and y are 0, then the value is 9. So here at the center, the f is uh, square root of 9, which is 3. But as x um, far away from the origin, the value is decreasing. In fact, it's decreasing radially. And at the boundary, that is the same as here for this inequality. When it is equal, then it's boundary. On the boundary, the value is zero. So we can say that the range is, okay, we try to use the Z notation, range is from zero to three. So that's the range, okay? First or the partial derivatives. We learned earlier in the earlier chapter, we learned the uh, uh, derivatives. So y equal fx for this function of one variable, and we define the derivative uh, is differentiable at a if this quotient, uh, so that is, uh, if we see uh, this picture, a and a plus h, and we measure the slope of this second line, and then as h approaches 0, once the limit exists, then it will be slope at the point. This slope is defined as the derivative of f at the point A we did. Right? Now, we'll expand this uh, differentiability for functions of two variables. Okay, first we'll define x-directional derivative. Uh, now f is a function of two variables, x, y, and we uh, consider the case where y x is varying while uh, y is fixed. So say y equals b. Then, uh, here, we define g of x equals f of uh, x b. And then, this is a function of a single variable x. So, by using the standard derivative um, the definition, we may uh, try to get derivative of g in x direction. That is, the partial derivative of f with respect to x. 
and we are using the notation f sub x. That is this one. The quotient is made for g. g is a function of x, and a plus h minus um, uh, no g of a plus h minus g of a. That is exactly uh, same kind of thing here. Now g is here f of x b. So we can write in this ring. Now, once the limit exists, then we say this is f sub x at a b. Uh, okay, that is the same as this one. Now, y is constant. That means uh, for that a b. Now, y is constant, then it is the same as this direction, x direction. If we uh, consider the image of this line, then on the surface, it will make a curve. And along the curve, we try to measure the slope at the point. Then that is exactly f sub x. We did here you know, mathematically by fixing y on change it. But in the case, uh, here the image of this line will be a curve then once it is curved, then exactly the same mm, logic uh, for just simple um, f prime is used uh, at the point. And the slope along the curve is now f sub x, the partial derivative of f in the direction of x. Okay. And similarly, for y-directional derivative, we can do in this way. Here, um, now we fix x is a, and now uh, y is varying. So uh, pictorially, okay, we go back to this picture. Now we fix uh, x so that y is varying. That means this direction. If we consider the image of this line, then it is a curve. Now at the point, we try to measure the slope in, in that direction. So the slope, if a slope exists, then we say that is f sub y at the point a, b. So uh, this um, um, mathematical derivation is exactly uh, uh, the same way okay, as except x and y uh, interchange them. Okay, let's try to find um, f sub x is 0, 0 for the function defined in this way. Then uh, from the definition, they are the same as here in x direction, it's changing h and 0, and y direction, we have a value b here, 0 fixed. Okay, and we take a limit, h approaches 0. Okay, there one is the limit, the same limit, h approaches 0. Now, what is f h 0? x is h, y is 0. So that, that is, okay, third root, okay, I'll rewrite here. And that is, um, Third root of now x is h, so that h cubed, and y equals 0, so that 0 cubed, minus f0, zero, 0, and that is a third root of 0 cubed plus 0 cubed, right? And divide by h. Okay, uh, so here there is a limit, and here that will be. Okay, this is zero. Of course, over the whole thing is zero. And the uh, power three and third root, so it'll make h and the bottom h. Okay, this is always one, no matter how h, how small h is. So that, that is the same as a limit. Of course, we write here now the detail, h was zero and one. So that must be one. So that's the final answer. 
for this function at 0, 0, the slope in x direction is 1. Okay. Here we have um, definition. If f is a function of two variables, is partial derivatives are the functions f sub x, and we are using this notation over uh, this notation. We call this one uh, round f over round x, and f sub y is round f over round y, defined by uh, here in this equation. Now, rather than uh, specific point a b now we are using general point x y and here for f sub x now is changing in x direction only for f sub y is changing in y direction only so that's um, partial derivatives of a uh, function of two variables here we have observation the partial derivative with respect to x represents the slope of the tangent lines to the curve that are parallel to the xg plane. Okay, I explained the Victoria already here. Um, so f sub x is just uh, along that one. We consider the imaging, so the curve along the curve at the point we try to get slope that is oh boy that is now that one okay that is okay in y direction okay x is fixed in y direction i'm sorry there must be f sub y and for f sub x now y is fixed uh, so along this line we consider image here and along the curve we try to get slope at the point that is f sub x. Okay. So that is here the explanation. Now, in practice, uh, uh, here is a rule for finding partial derivatives. To find f sub x, we regard y as a constant and differentiate f with respect to x. And for f sub y, we consider x as a constant and differentiate f with respect to y. Let's try here by using the rule. Now, f is given in this way, and we try to find f sub x, f sub y, and also now a second derivative. Okay? So, first we'll try to get f sub x and f sub y f sub x, x derivative, x is variable, y is constant in this case, x is variable, so it's a 3x squared, and this is constant, so there's a, now 2xy cubed, this is constant, so it will be 0 in derivative. How about now f sub y, there's, that will be constant. So derivative will be zero. And for this one, now y cubed, that is a three y squared. So that three x squared is constant and y squared. And that one, minus four y, right? Okay. Now how about f sub x and y? That means that first we make x derivative and y derivative. Okay, from this one, now we make a y derivative, then that will be zero. And here, uh, this is constant, so that we have here constant, and derivative of y cubed with respect to y will be 3y squared. We did right here 6xy um, squared. Right? Now, once x is 2, y equal 1, we can evaluate this one here at 2 and 1. Okay, then x is 2, then 12, plus x is 2, 4, and 1. Okay, so this is 4. 
So it is 16. So in x direction, the slope is 16. Uh, how about uh, for y direction again? We are using point two, two and one. Then x is two. That is twelve and one and uh, minus four. So that is a, a. So in x direction, the slope is about twice of y directional slope. What that one? Now two and one. Then, okay, x is two. So here there is 12 and y equal 1. Okay, so that's the answer. Okay. Function of three variables. We didn't define uh, functions of three variables officially, however, and from functions of one variable, we try to get uh, the derivatives for functions of two variables. Now we can naturally expand the concept for functions of three variables. So here, f of x, y, z is defined in this way. Now, uh, we try to find the first partial derivatives of the function. Okay, so x, y, z are independent variables. So we start with f sub x, x directional derivative, that one. So in this case, y and z are constant. Right? So first we are using here now with x variable and using product rule or chain rule, we can get the uh, derivative. Okay. So for all this term, we make a derivative, then that is the same as cosine. So we are using chain rule. Cosine xz over 1 plus y and derivative of this one with respect to x which is z over 1 plus y. This is simple, right? How about uh, f sub y? Again same, in this case y is uh, the variable and x, z are constants. So that, again, we start with the derivative with respect to this whole thing. That will be this cosine part, that one, times. Here, we have to make a derivative with respect to y for that one. Now, x, z are constant for this one. So that, that is same as here, 1 plus y and squared, and minus 1 will appear, so that minus x, z, right? Okay, it's done. And how about f sub c? The same. And here, now z is uh, the variable. So first we try to make derivative with respect to that one. And chain rule. So we have the same term times. Now for this one, we have to make a derivative with respect to z, which is x over 1 plus y. Right? Yeah, that's the answer. Okay. Okay. It is the end of the section. Thank you.